All right, uh, Paul, yeah. you're up first right. on the block this time. Uh, your thoughts on uh, song number three? Do you know what? I really like that. Um, there were uh, I, I kept picturing it in kind of travelogue program, uh, kind of a quirky thing aimed at the those mid mid twenties, eighteen to thirty odd people. Uh, and I just got this picture of it being a program called Pissed and Bull. You know, going around somewhere in the middle the Middle East with that kind of in the background. Um, <laughs> All right. the the only the only things i'd say about that i mean obviously that that to me is purely written from a licensing point of view um an ident kind of track it's something that uh, i would hope the guys or girls whoever it is producing that that they've got a whole catalog of that kind of stuff that they've got together on a show reel that they are sending out to every TV station and their brother trying to get stuff on shows. Um, that's their niche. I think that what they're trying to do with the off the wall stuff with the, the loops and filtering, I think they could be more experimental with that. It feels a little bit safe uh, is my only thing. I think it lacks a little bit of weight and grunt in the, in the bottom end, which um, although it's obviously going to be background music because it's aimed at TV, I think it could be more, um, more dirty, a little bit, a bit more messed up. I think a lot of the filtered sounds are um, over loud in the mix. Um, I think they want to look at the way they're filtering a bit. Their imaging and panning was quite nice. Um, minimal use, smaller reverbs. They weren't overdoing it on that. I liked a lot of the guitar work. Uh, instrumental wise, I'd suggest rather than using MIDI things for the reeds, for the things like the accordion, go and find some old drunk guy who's a busker and get him in to get some loops down. Um, that would add a million percent to it. Uh, just the, the instruments that aren't real on there that are melodic instruments, I'd just suggest they get samples of real guys playing them, make them a bit more dirty and edgy, and I think it's a winner. I really enjoyed it. It made me smile. Excellent, excellent. Glad to hear you enjoy it. Uh, Ian, uh, let's go with you. Your thoughts on uh, number three? Yeah, I enjoyed that as well. It was a bit repetitive, um, but it, it did build build quite nicely. But um, yeah, it, it, it's Pulp Fiction to me. That's what it gave me the image of, that sort of uh, style of thing. I found the bit the mix very bass heavy and the bass was dominating everything. There was some really nice instrumentation going on. There's some Spanish guitar. I think there was some R back yeah. in vocals, very low in the mix. I wanted to hear more of that. They've got that loads of front. sub. There was loads of sub going on, but not actually much bass. They've got loads of kind of sub, like they put the whole mix through max bass or something, but there was no yeah. actual punch, if that makes any sense. Yeah. It was just drowning out everything out. You know, it, it needs that punch in there, and it needs every, all, you know, some really great instrumentation. It was all seemed a bit muddy behind that bass. So, yeah. I think, you know, a, a remix on that would do it the world of good. Panning was great, uh, interesting sounds. It's some really nice hooks as well. I mean, you know, I just had the sort of, uh, you know, market feel, you know, this sort of uh, Middle Eastern markets and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I would have yeah. loved to have heard some some sort of Asian vocal on there, Middle Eastern vocal of some sort. Yeah, do you know, I've written that down as a note, way. actually, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that would have topped it for me, really giving it that, that authentic feel, but in a modern way. Yeah. And, and I think that's what was great about it. It sort of mixed the two sort of cultures very, very nicely. Uh, I yeah, think I liked it. British Surprised Mary Connett it. said Egypt will be free, but they had to remove it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it current. <laughs> Come on, yeah, this is a fresh show. <laughs> okay, uh, Tom, uh, what do you think about this one? Your thoughts on number three? Um, the first eight bars made me smile. I was really liking it, and then expected it to take off and it went no place um this type of music to me i mean there were places for uh, i don't even remember if there was a crash symbol in it um there were there were yeah a lot more tinkly high-end stuff um a lot more I mean, if you're going to take something on like this, you're going to have, you have to orchestrate it. Um, I, I used to work for a producer whose rule of thumb was if he hadn't used every patch chord and every input, the song wasn't done. Wow. You know? And this is one of those songs where 
you know, even if it was like, you know, where everything stopped and you just heard ding and then went back into everything, you, you know, it, 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 it could have used a break. It could have used much more orchestration. Um, I got a very flat feel on the mix. There was um, there was hidden life there, but nothing that would come out. And you know, I when I listen to music, I want to be woken up, even if I'm going to sleep. Mm-hmm. I, and when I say woken up, I mean I want something that that'll uh, put me in a mood, whether it be to sleep. To be, because sometimes the same stuff can put you to sleep, wake you up, make you have to go to the bathroom, whatever. And and this, you know, didn't get, leave me with any real waking up feeling. It was kind of flat for you. Yeah, I, I I mean, as soon as the first eight sixteen bars went, I knew what it was going to do. The next eight sixteen bars, it was very repetitive. Okay. All right, uh, that song, gentlemen, uh, number three, was, as O.B. had mentioned, uh, a song called Rockin' Klezmer by a uh, group or a guy called Weird Bugger is signed up on (laughs) the MSI website. At least he's honest. At least he's honest, exactly. (laughs) You guys have uh, to decide on a song of the week, don't you? We do. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave it Mm -hmm. to you. Discuss amongst yourselves what you guys think the song of the week should be. Uh, last week's number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can only pick from, from the songs of this week, Tommy. Oh, I think oh, this oh. has got to be the hardest week so far, actually. It's the hardest but, week I've had, on it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> that you took know a while. <laughs> Yes. Mm. Um, um, mm. I mean, I've I got I've written, one. Down, I've written down mine in order of, of uh, uh, what I'm thinking 312 to me. That's that's my personal thing of, uh, and it's not because three is actually I'm thinking of in a strong piece of music or a strong song or anything. It's just the thing that I see needs the least amount of work for the guys to be able to sell it to someone. So I'm being purely business like about it. I think three is my winner. Yeah, I've got to agree with that. One, I think, has got the most commercial sort of Mm -hmm. feel for it, but it needs a lot of work to be done before that's a a finished piece. And I Mm -hmm. think number three is the one that I'm going to walk away from this show remembering, uh, which I think is the very important thing. It's it's the one that hooked me most. It's the one that went, yeah, actually, I do like this, you know. Yeah, Uh, totally agree with all Tommy's comments of it needs a real good mix and um, it's one-dimensional and it's repetitive and, as we said, it should be more experimental fishing for vocals. The guy should go to town and be an even more weird bugger. I think he's he's overestimating his his status at the minute because he's a a pretty safe bugger (laughs) at the minute. He wants to go down, smoke a few fat ones and make a really good track there. I think think he could get that on on a variety of TV shows. I, I looks like I'm on man out. I still think number one with all the um, mistakes or not experience or, or whatever, it's because it has the most potential. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, uh, whereas I'll work my butt off if I think a song has more potential. Um, than, you know, having to work my butt off on songs that don't have that much potential. I'll yeah. do my best still. I'll still do my best no matter what, but I won't enjoy it. <laughs> so I, I, I would have to go on number one, and, and I can understand why everybody, you know, you know made their picks and stuff, but, uh, you know... Number one, just Courtney as as like uh, more commercially viable and um, done right. I think it could be a hell of a song. Okay, so uh, what we have then is we've got uh, two votes on number three. Unless Tommy's argument changed your minds, guys. Well, you see, yeah, I, it's not changed my mind because I agree with everything you said anyway. 
I'm just being pure short termist and just trying to look at what is is right. It has got the most potential. Uh, it yeah, needs it the is. most work as well. So you know, I'm just I'm just thinking. Of, I don't know what we're judging on. Are we looking at? Um, Song. What state they're in now, and how much work needs doing, or is it the quality of the song for that's, stop and uh, you know? I mean, yeah, you know, that's something you guys have to figure out as the song of the week. Uh, that's purely a choice amongst you three. <laughs> Ring to I mean, me. you are right. Tom. I think um, you know it is it is the most commercially viable, but I think Paul's right in the sense it is the most work to get it there. Oh, uh, absolutely. And the I... one I'm, the one I'm going to walk away remembering from this this show. Uh, it's really cool it for me is, is number three and I've got to stick with that. Yeah. Okay. Same here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like the decisions made democracy democracy wins always. Song number three it is.